how can I make myself feel happy? Happiness is something many of us struggle with on occasion, as life can be very challenging at times. In this video, we're going to answer the question, how can I make myself feel happy, with practical and lasting solutions. So if you're ready to kick your sadness to the curb and start feeling happy now, let's jump right in. Being happy is truly one of the most important aspects of the human experience. When you stop and think about it, nearly everything we want or chase in life, we seek out because we believe it will make us feel happy. Money, fancy cars, a nice house, a loving romantic partner. Beneath all of these things, what we are truly seeking is the feel-good feelings they provide, or in other words, happiness. In this video, I'm going to first provide you with a series of happiness hacks, things that you can do right now in order to give you a more immediate boost of happiness, ideas designed to help overcome a foul mood or just perk you up a bit. Now, as self-observation reveals to us, for most of us, being happy can be a fleeting thing. We may feel elated in one moment, and then something undesirable occurs, which yanks us right out of that pleasant state into a downward spiral. So, given that happiness can sometimes be somewhat of a fair-weather friend, toward the end of the video, we're going to discuss a more permanent, fundamental solution to make yourself feel happy, and to maintain that happy state as you go forward. In order to learn how we can make ourselves feel happy, we must first understand what it is that is preventing us from being happy to begin with. Why is it that happiness seems to come and go? If it feels so good to be happy, why can't we hold on to this feeling for longer periods of time? And why are there some people out there who seem to always be happy, regardless of what's going on in their lives? It might seem crazy what I'm about to say. When we utilize introspection and look within for answers, what we discover is that most of us are running a mental program which does not serve us, a simple idea that's preventing us from being happy. This idea has been communicated to us since birth, unknowingly and is shown to us by nearly everyone we know, reinforcing its efficacy. Since nearly everyone around us tends to run the same program, most of us never pause or have cause to question it. So what is this idea that's preventing us from feeling happy? It's actually deceptively simple. We have made our happiness conditional Rather than choose happiness as our preferred state of being and work toward that end, instead, we have collectively outsourced our happiness to the care of circumstance. So what that translates to in real life terms is, when something we deem good happens to us, we feel happy. Conversely, when something we do not want to happen occurs, something we label bad, we feel unhappy inside. The truth is, this is a learned response and one that, with practice, can be overcome. Now, wouldn't that make you happy? Hell yeah! So let's get into those more immediate happiness hacks so we can start feeling better right away. I have five of them for you. And again, be sure to watch until the end of this video where we'll offer you an effective solution for becoming happy on a permanent basis. Happiness hack number one, go outside in nature. If you've been cooped up inside all day, sometimes something as simple as a change of scenery can make a world of difference. So even if it's just for a few minutes, step outdoors and take a deep breath of fresh air. Let go of what's troubling you and feel the pleasant sensation of warm sunshine beaming across your face. 
Take a few minutes to let go, to relax, and to just be. Happiness hack number two. Perform a kind act for someone else. Now, this may at first seem counterintuitive given the fact that you are the one that is already struggling to be happy. However, if you step into this space, what you will discover is that by doing something nice for another person, you will begin to feel better. As an example, you could leave a love note for your romantic partner or unexpectedly surprise him or her with a single rose upon their return home from work. You could hold the door open for a stranger in public and offer a smile, which will almost certainly be returned. Another example might be to offer a neighbor some food if you prepare a meal that's just a little too large. There's really no shortage of kind acts if you put forth just a little bit of creativity coupled with a dose of heart. And the neat lesson you'll uncover here is that when happiness is shared, it multiplies. Happiness hack number three, listen to upbeat music. I grew up during the era where you had to listen to the radio for hours in order to finally catch your favorite song and then hope that you were quick enough to hit the record button on your boombox in order to capture it on cassette. Fortunately today, for most of us, near limitless media is at the touch of our fingertips. So create a playlist of your favorite upbeat, positive songs that make you feel happy and watch as your mood goes from sour to soaring. Happiness hack number four. Watch a funny movie or TV show. You know that movie that always makes you laugh even though you've seen it a dozen or so times? Or how about that TV series that always puts a smile on your face even though you've watched it so often you can quote nearly every line? When you're struggling to feel happy, nothing can make you feel happier quicker than stepping into a familiar universe where you already know things are pleasant, comical, and uplifting. So sit for a while with a funny movie, forget about what's troubling you, and allow yourself to laugh, let go, and smile. And finally, happiness hack number five. Clean out your closet. Go through that mess we call a closet and donate the things you no longer need. As you browse through your belongings, Think about all the things here which you do not use or perhaps no longer want. The benefits of this act are twofold. First, you'll feel great once you've decluttered and organized your stuff, leaving your environment tidy and pleasing to the eye. And second, notice how it makes you happy when you donate your old things to Goodwill or some form of charity. The truth is, there are many, many people out there in need who have it far worse than you do, and knowing that you are helping them will make you feel even better than you may anticipate. So there are five happiness hacks which you can use whenever you're feeling down that can help make you feel happy right away. While these tips and others like them are absolutely effective, they can fall short in the sense that they do not address our happiness or lack thereof at a fundamental level. In other words, are we sure our happiness has to come and go? Is there a way to be happy nearly all of the time, regardless of what's going on in our lives? As stated previously, the reason we struggle to be happy and to maintain that happiness as our internal state is because long ago, we learned to make our happiness conditional. If A happens, we'll be happy, but if B occurs, we'll be unhappy. What I wish to offer to you for your own personal exploration is that happiness need not be conditional. Observation shows us that circumstance is a poor custodian of our happiness, so why relinquish our personal power in this way? 
if you want to know how you can make yourself feel happy and to feel that way going forward, understand that true, lasting, fundamental happiness is an inside job. It has to do with what's going on inside you, not in the outside world. What this translates to is that happiness is a choice, albeit a difficult choice at times. But the challenge involved makes this notion no less true. If you want to be happy permanently as your primary default state, know that this is a skill which can be practiced and developed just like any other. Ultimately, one cannot find happiness because it is not located outside of ourselves. We have to create it. We have to choose it moment by moment. We have to care so much about how we feel that we decide not to give up our happiness when something unpleasant bumps up against it. I personally use a happiness routine to start off each day. A while back, I thought to myself, if we work at our bodies and we work at our minds, why not work at our emotions as well? So I'm going to share my simple happiness routine, which I use to start off every day, regardless of what I have going on. This five-step routine has been so effective for me that I'm even willing to wake up an hour or two earlier than normal if I have something scheduled for the following morning, simply because I've learned how effective it is in stacking the happiness odds in my favor and ensuring that I have a more pleasant, positive day. So, permanent happiness routine, step one. When I very first wake up in the morning, before I get out of bed and before I start thinking about the things I need to do that day, I think of three simple things which I am grateful for and then feel the feeling of gratitude for each. This morning, for example, upon waking up, I first thought about how good my comfortable bed felt. I know that there are homeless people out there that don't have the luxury of sleeping in a safe, comfortable spot, and they've probably forgotten what a bed even feels like. So I am grateful for the things I have in my possession. Second, I felt gratitude for my pets. At present, I live alone with the exception of my dogs and cats. They offer me constant companionship and unconditional love. And as I laid there in bed, I felt the feeling of gratitude to have them in my life. And third, I felt grateful for waking up. None of us has promised tomorrow and feeling happy about just being alive can truly put all of our problems in perspective. Permanent happiness routine, step two. Once I get up out of bed, and again, before I start engaging in thought, the first thing I do is my yoga practice. I've tried many different modalities for caring for my body over the years, and I've found that no other methodology makes me feel as healthy, alive, and refreshed as yoga. I personally do a yoga flow for about an hour to an hour and a half each morning as my first activity of the day, and I always come out of it feeling great. Permanent happiness routine, step three, meditation. For years, I told myself there was no way I could meditate. I was a corporate guy for nearly a decade and very accustomed to an always-on, fast-paced, aggressive type of existence. That approach got me a lot of material stuff, but it certainly did not make me happy. By meditating early in my day, I'm able to let go of my stressors. Meditation allows me to clear my head, release my worries, and begin my day with a balanced, positive attitude. 
I've learned the hard way that that's certainly a lot better than leaving my happiness to chance. While I personally meditate on average for 45 minutes to an hour each day, a simple 20-minute daily session can make a gigantic difference in your life. Permanent happiness routine, step four. I tidy up my environment. Now, I'm not talking about deep cleaning and breaking out those oversized yellow rubber gloves like Dexter's mom. But what I am referring to is simply picking up any overt messes from the night before. Decluttering might be a good way to put it. What I've found is that when my environment is organized and clear of clutter, my head inside feels the same way. I also typically listen to happy, upbeat music during my cleaning phase. I might even dance a little bit if no one's looking. In the final permanent happiness routine step, which is step five, I create. Now, this can be something small or something large, depending on my available time and energy level. And of note, I always listen to how I'm feeling inside as I go through these steps each day. As a YouTube content creator, I'm fortunate in that I have the ability to create videos which can help and inspire other people. This is something which brings me a great deal of happiness and fulfillment. So this step could be something as simple as writing down a few bullet points I want to talk about in my next video, or perhaps brainstorming ideas for a new video. In other cases, I might take a few minutes to create a thumbnail image for the current video I'm working on. I personally enjoy singing, drawing, and writing as creative outlets. So I try to touch on any one of these areas if I can, even if it's just briefly. While this is my personal permanent happiness routine, yours need not look exactly like this. Explore what works for you, and you'll get to know yourself better in the process. Chances are, you'll likely discover something new which brings you happiness and fulfillment in life. And in that very act of discovery, you'll feel happy inside. The truth is, no one can answer the question, how can I make myself feel happy, but you. This is for you to discover and learn about yourself. If you really want to make a difference in your overall happiness level, implement these suggestions and find what works best for you. Happiness is a choice and can be a challenging choice at times, but recognizing this truth is precisely how to get there. If you feel that this video contained value, please click the like button, which would make me happy, and be sure to subscribe as well in order to receive future content such as this. What has been your challenge with being happy? Do you have a specific scenario you need help with? Or perhaps a suggestion not included here which may be of benefit to others? Please share your thoughts and feelings in the comment section below. I hope you have a wonderful day today. Be happy! And I look forward to speaking with you in the next video.